On today's Live Open Daily, Meta is missing the boat on a really simple way to boost retention for games on our platform. We have new games this month on the Quest Plus subservice, and unfortunately, another company is going through layoffs. I'm your host, Live Open Mike, and if you spent any time recently on Steam playing the game, you most likely have heard this sound. That's the sound of you finishing an achievement within the game. If you don't know what an achievement is, it's basically milestones that developers could put in games to mark like maybe completing a chapter if you're playing a game that has a story. It could be like an accumulation reward if you're playing something like a zombie shooter. Say for instance, if you kill 10,000 zombies, that could be an achievement. And it's basically ways for players to track the progression throughout the game. Achievements have gotten really popular in the last few years, especially among single player games. They were already baked into multiplayer games for a long time now. But for single player games, they'll mark milestones like if you completed this chapter or if you found this hidden area, because what that creates is intrinsic replay value. The reason we're talking about this is because I and most MetaQuest headset owners recently got an email from Meta that reads the following, quote, we're reaching out to let you know that on December 20th, 2024, MetaQuest scoreboards will be discontinued and no longer available on Quest. The discontinuation of the MetaQuest scoreboards app will not affect other scoreboards or achievement features integrated into your user profile and other services on Quest. You will still be able to keep track of your scores and achievements through these existing features. I read this email and thought to myself, what existing features? Quick pop quiz. Number one, did you know that you could get your achievements for a MetaQuest game through the scoreboards app? Have you actually even opened the scoreboards app? Or more importantly, do you know where else to see your achievements on a Quest game? I did a video on my YouTube channel about my main problems with the MetaQuest store, and this is one of the biggest issues I have with it. I spent a whole section talking about how bad the achievement system is. To get your achievements on your phone app, you have to pull up the MetaQuest store on your phone, and at the very bottom, there's a button that says menu. Once you hit menu, your profile comes up at the top. You click on your profile and you can scroll down a bit and then see your achievements. Number one, that's way too many steps removed. Number two, that's the only way within the Quest app to actually get to achievements. If you did something that's more intuitive, like, oh, I don't know, click on a game on the store, you're not going to find achievements anywhere on there, even in games you already own. This makes no sense to me. So if you go back into your profile and look at your achievements, there's a few different ways you can do it. There's a see all button that totally lies to you because it implies you can see all of your achievements. This is a complete another lie. There's only a scroll there and there's a finite number of achievements. It's usually randomized too. It's not like your most recent achievements. I know because one of the things in this scroll is an achievement I got in Sniper Elite The Winter Warrior, a game I played well over seven months ago and I've played dozens of games since then. Moreover, if you click on the achievement, which just has a name, and sometimes those names, depending on the developer, may not be very descriptive. If you click on that achievement, where does it take you? To a separate page where you can see how many people have achieved it and maybe even a list of the other achievements in the game? Nah, nah, it doesn't do that. It takes you to the game store page on the Quest Store where you can buy the game yourself, even though you already own it. So I don't know why it's taking you to the Quest Store page. Maybe you want to gift it to a friend of yours. I don't know, it, it makes absolutely no sense. There's also another scroll on your profile if you scroll down a little bit further past that see all button and you'll see a feed of what seems to be more randomly curated achievements based on some criteria that we don't know about and doesn't make any sense. Here, if you click on one of these, you can actually see how many people have that achievement and how many of your friends who own the game actually have the achievement as well. It's a pretty useful tool. For instance, I checked my scroll before I sat down to record this podcast and I recently got an achievement in Demio called Big Boned. Minus the really weird phrasing of that achievement title, there's no indication of what this achievement is because there's no description to it. And again, if you click on it, it just takes you to the quest store where you can see the actual game because you already own it. So of course you need to see the game to see if you want to buy it again, I don't know. Or if you click the other one, it takes you to the achievement page where you can see how many people have it. But again, it doesn't tell you what it is. I actually had to go to Steam's meta page for Demio to look up what the achievement was. And apparently it's when picking a bone with a boss, prepare to send them to the grave with it. Basically meaning when you're in a boss fight and you throw a bone at a boss, if you kill them with it, you get this achievement. It's a really obscure thing to do in Demio, but that's kind of the point. It's not easy to get to a boss fight in Demio, and it takes some time to get there, at least upwards of an hour or two to get to a boss fight, and then get that boss down to one HP to the point where you can kill it with a bone. It's a very obscure and not easy thing to do, which makes it an achievement because it doesn't really affect the gameplay. It's just something for a player like me who has spent hundreds of hours in Demio to strive for. And that's where my argument comes in on this. It creates intrinsic replay value. Meta knows they have a retention problem in their headsets. We've seen everyone from Mark Zuckerberg to Andrew Bosworth to Chris Pruitt to Mark Rapkin, all executives in Meta all openly speak about the fact that they need to get people in headsets longer. 
and there have been some reports that Quest 3 retention is better than Quest 2 retention, but retention is not a problem you can fix overall with one major feature, it's more like death by a thousand paper cuts. Instead, you can add a bunch of features like little quality of life boosts for everyone who uses one of your headsets. All these features come together to create a package where basically a user doesn't really have to take their headset off to access any of their data or information. Everything is available right there within the headset or within the app. But the fact that this isn't really available on both absolutely drives me nuts. Now, I'm not going to say that adding achievements or at least emphasizing that overhaul in that system is going to fix Meta's retention issue, but what it does do is create a reason for people to replay games that they may not necessarily want to replay again, especially single player games, because most of those are going to be one and done. You've already gone through the process. You've experienced the story. You met with all the characters. If there are NPCs in the game in the first place, you've already rolled credits. You've pretty much had the full experience, why would you go back in? Achievements are a reason to be able to do that. Let's take one of my favorite games of the last few years, Mossbook 2 for Parlier Games. This is a game that I personally have completed several times, but I totally understand players who have not completed the whole game because even though there are in-game collectibles like the dust feature that opens up secret passageways to get new armor and the stained glass pictures on the main menu of the game that you have to find scrolls throughout each area of the game to be able to fill those in those are in-game collectibles that completionists will want to find and that will keep them replaying the game over and over to find every single thing achievements are another part of that Mossbook 2 at the time of this recording for this podcast has 45 achievements in the game. I've played Mossbook 2 probably half a dozen times at this point and I have 33 of the 45 achievements. The 12 I don't have and some of this is not going to make sense out of context but just kind of bear with me because you'll see kind of stuff that developers will go for here. Make Quill dizzy. Quill is the mouse you play as in the game. You play her in third person. Uh, discover a sealed door to another realm which I thought I did but okay. Destroy forged enemies using each weapon in quick succession. Destroy an armor screecher with a piston, destroy a scorcher with a control scorcher, and the list goes on and on and on. These are basically little actions that you can carry out within the course of your game that will give you these achievements and that gives you something to play for after you've already completed the main story. To take another example, let's look at one of my other favorite games, After the Fall. This is a co-op zombie shooter, so not much in the way of stories. Again, I've replayed over and over again with my friends, and in this game, there's 30 achievements of which I have 20. For the ones I don't have, it's like collect 500,000 harvest. Harvest is the currency system within the game. Game. Out of the 500,000, I have 191,880. Uh, the next three are complete levels within the game on Nightmare Difficulty. That's the hardest difficulty in the game. Let's see, uh, get 100 eliminations with a shotgun, get 20 consecutive critical hits in a row. These are all things that you can do within the course of the game. But if I'm striving for a specific achievement, then that's going to get me back into the game until I hit that achievement and then go on to the next one. Not every single player is like this. I, by and large, don't really care about achievements unless it's a game that I want to play again and I need the motivated reason to play it because I've already experienced the story, I've already seen all the levels, I already have all the cosmetics, so on and so forth. This is something that can get people back into their games. I think Steam does an excellent job of this. If you go to any page of a game that you own on Steam in your library, you actually see all the achievements that you have in like a quick little widget. You can click on that to expand. You can also see of your friends who own the game, what achievements they've looked at. So then maybe you squad up with your friend and say, hey, I don't have this achievement, neither do you. Let's go hop in the game and try to knock it out real quick. That's creating replay value. Valve puts this on your library, understanding that players need another reason to go back into a game after they've already completed it or seen most of the content that's available. There's a whole subculture in gaming, flat screen and VR called basically achievement hunters where they'll just chase every single achievement in every game. It's part of their process to 100% the game. Most people will not want to 100% every single game they have, but just like experience points and progression for like cosmetics, new collectibles, things like that, achievements give them something to strive for in their favorite games, so they're going to continue to play those over and over and over again. For me, Demio is an example of that. I have a friend who I play Demio with quite often, and she's going to get mad at me when she hears this, but there's an achievement in Demio on the last book of the game, book five, and it basically says that you have to clear 100 enemies on one floor before you move on to the next floor. In book five, there is an enemy that spawns mirrors that will spawn enemies over and over and over again so you never run out of enemies to fight. I was bored one night and couldn't sleep so I fired up Demio because that helps me wind my mind down. It's a game I play to relax. And when I was going through the whole process, I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and try this achievement. So I proceeded to sit there for two and a half hours just in one level, killing enemies over and over and over again, getting really hairy because I was losing HP and had to refill the HP by going to fountains and stuff like that. It was actually a really fun experience going through and getting that achievement. Again, my friend, and she knows who she is, will be really mad when she hears this. I'll probably get a DM the second she hears this line. 
but there was another reason for me to go back into the game. Now, some of the achievements can be a little bit ridiculous, like for instance, getting 500,000 of the game currency in After the Fall, but I know people who will spend hundreds of hours in After the Fall and they already have that achievement, and that was something that they were tracking because they wanted to feel like some sense of accomplishment. Giving the player an endorphin rush that boosts the serotonin and feeling like they accomplished something in the game. Again, this is low-hanging fruit that I really wish Meta would fix because it's a really easy way to keep people coming back into gaming on your platform. Hopefully with the death of scoreboards this coming December, they actually take a look at that system and overhaul it. I'm not going to get my hopes up because achievements have been broken on the Quest platform since that platform was created. This isn't a problem on the Rift platform because the Meta PC app actually gives you access to achievements, but on the Quest platform, they're non-existent. So hopefully they fix this because this is something they can use to keep people in headsets longer. Moving on to the next story, it's July 1st, and that means we have new games on the Quest Plus subscription service. If you don't know what Quest Plus is, it's a sub-service Meta offers for currently $7.99 a month, where you get access to two new free games every single month. They're not going to be like the latest and greatest on the platform, like don't expect to see Asgard's Wrath 2 or Assassin's Creed Nexus on this, but you get access to like older games that maybe have sequels coming out, like recently they put Pixel Ripped on there because Pixel Ripped 1978 was available, the first I Expect You to Die game was available there, and recently they opened up a Quest Plus catalog, which is a rotating series of games that are available for free. Those don't change every month, they can persist for two months, three months, like the current lineup has been there for over a month now but they'll swap it out for maybe a new game here and there a service like this is actually really nice for people who don't have a ton of games or maybe they just got their headset and they're looking to fill out their catalog a bit and it gets people to maybe try a game that they generally would not have bought at full price case in point these two games on offer this month the first game is creed rise to glory this game comes from servios they're the makers of the upcoming alien game so if you want to see some of their past work go ahead grab this game on quest plus it's based off the Rocky Balboa slash Adonis Creed film series that's been going on for over 40 years at this point, where you fight different characters from within that film franchise, from Rocky Balboa to Ivan Drago. It's a really well-designed game, and it offers a different flavor than like Thrill of the Fight, which I think is one of the best boxing games in VR, period, because you're actually embodying a character and you're fighting some iconic characters that you may know from your childhood. For instance, boxing Rocky Balboa, a character I've watched since I was a kid, was a pretty big thrill to do in VR. The other game is The Last Clockwinder for Team Potoko. This was, I think, the best puzzle game that came out in 2022. It's one of the best games in 2022 in VR, period. You play as a character who is operating a giant machine built inside of a tree, and you can create temporary clones of yourself. They last anywhere from like two to four seconds. That can do a very simple task, like say, catch a piece of fruit and throw it to the next clone. And through creating a certain number of clones, you basically get the machine to run, which as you go through and progress through every single level, these puzzles get a little bit more complicated, but you get the machine running at its max efficiency. There's also a really, really sweet story baked into the game told mostly via voiceover. It was one of my favorite games of 2022 period, let alone, I think the best puzzle game in 2022. It retails usually for about 20 bucks and I haven't seen it in a whole bunch of bundles on the Quest store, but it's a wonderful little game. If you're looking for something new to play, uh, I can't recommend it enough. I think it's fantastic. If you're not on the Quest platform, Last Clockwork. If you're not on the Quest platform, and you don't have access to Quest Plus. Last Clockwinder is also on Steam. The last story we're going to end on a bit of a down note comes from Upload VR. This is from Ian Hamilton. I'm just going to read the byline here. Ultra Leap reportedly plans to sell its Leap Motion hand tracking group amid major layoffs. I'll read through the high points of the article, including the statement from the company's spokesperson. The startups formerly known as Ultra Haptics and Leap Motion appear to be heading in separate directions again after five years together ended in significant layoffs. A Sky News report cites sources as saying the company is half in its workforce and plans to seek a buyer for its hand tracking business. Developer Max Thomas posted on X that he was looking for work after the US team at Ultra Leap was laid off. An Ultra Leap spokesperson provided the following statement to Sky News. Since the company was established in 2019, Ultraleap has gained international recognition as the leading innovator in mid-air haptic and hand tracking technologies. During this period, customer needs and behaviors have continually evolved and we need to adapt our strategy to reflect these changes. After much consideration, we have made the difficult decision to reshape some of our divisions and reduce the size of our team. This decision has not been taken lightly, but it is necessary for us to adapt our business to better serve our market and our customers. We deeply appreciate the hard work and dedication of everyone who has contributed to building Ultraleap. That ends the statement, continuing the article here. In May 2019, Ultra Haptics bought Leap Motion to merge their complementary ideas, a haptic effect produced through ultrasound with industry-leading hand tracking. 
It's now June 2024, and Apple Vision Pro and Meta Quest push two ends of the standalone VR headset market with hand tracking that doesn't use Leap Motion. And while few have ever felt the ultrasound haptic effect of ultra haptics, Leap Motion's hand tracking is used by many smaller manufacturers to offer a robust hand track user interface without another platform's overhead. Ultra Leap had a booth at Augmented World Expo in Long Beach where representatives demonstrated Meta's Ray-Ban glasses with an added sensor intended for all-day gesture recognition. As members of the Cronus group responsible for OpenXR, UltraLeap also helped shape the implementation of hand tracking support in the industry standard that allows applications built with it to be run on any compliant device. I think the bit in the middle really says it all here. Two of the major players within the XR industry, Meta and Apple, both developed their own hand tracking solutions. So that leaves a company like Ultralee to go to smaller manufacturers, maybe who don't have as big of a footprint in the industry, to say, hey, would you like to use our add-on technology for this? And even though the industry is still growing, that's probably not enough of a footprint to justify keeping that all on hand. My thoughts out to everyone who lost their job, getting fired just straight sucks, and I hope they're all able to land on their feet and find new jobs shortly. That's a wrap for this episode. Live Open Daily comes to you by days a week except this week uh this week for those who don't know you might live outside the united states on thursday is the 4th of july that's a major holiday here i will be celebrating with friends and family and i'll actually be taking the rest of that weekend off from my day job as well so there will only be three podcasts this week monday tuesday and wednesday and then we'll be back on our regular five-day week schedule monday through friday starting again next week you can catch live open daily on apple Podcasts, spotify youtube and iheart and also catch me on twitch several days a week where i stream vr i'm at live open mic thanks and i'll talk to you tomorrow